I'm Annette Pasternak and I help people stop compulsively picking their skin. If that's something that you need, subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Check out my other videos. I also offer books, which are linked in the video description, as is my website. Through there, you can find out about individual or small group coaching. So it's been a year almost since I put up a video on YouTube. I am going to start doing videos more often. I have some reasons why I have it. One, we just moved. Um, you might notice a different background. Uh, this is my new office. I also was hard at work for most of this past year, finishing my new book. So this is out now. Skin Picking the Freedom We Found. This is a sequel, I guess, to my much beloved <laughs> book, Skin Picking the Freedom to Finally Stop. This one is a little bit different because it actually incorporates stories and advice from so many people who have found a lot of success at reducing or even stopping their picking. If that is something that interests you, definitely get this book. It's linked in the notes below. So those are the reasons I haven't been recording videos, but I am now starting with a new series. This is the first video in the series and it is products and strategies to stop picking all your different body parts. So we're starting with the face today because that is the most picked at place for most people. And then we'll move on mm, probably the fingers next, but I take requests. So please put any suggestions for what other body parts you want me to cover in the comments below. We think we have a skin picking problem, but it is much more helpful to think about it as a problem of focusing too much on our skin of looking at our skin and of touching our skin. And that is a way to not pick, is to reduce the amount that we look at it, reduce the amount that we touch it, and that will also reduce the amount that we think about it. And we will be on the upward spiral to where we wanna be. So it's really helpful actually to think about skin picking as an addiction, okay? It's a behavioral addiction rather than a substance addiction, but it's very helpful for us to think of it as analogous to a substance addiction. If you hope to get off a substance that you're addicted to, whether it be drugs or alcohol or whatever, first of all, you have to get that substance away from you. So getting it out of your house, don't go to the places where it's readily available, that is very important at first. So it's very similar. We need to get away from looking at or touching our skin. Right now, it's too much of an automatic behavior, an automatic habit. Down the line, we'll be able to do those things. Now we cannot. So these products and strategies today will focus on how we stop looking at or touching our skin. Most people do pick in the mirror. So we're gonna focus on that first picking by sight, and then we're gonna move to picking by touch. Picking by sight, the mirror is a big problem, so either you wanna take the mirror out, or you wanna cover it, or I'll give you another strategy a little later if you can't do those things, but those are the best options. So we don't want our mirror to look ugly, right? That's no fun. So luckily there is a substance called window privacy film, which just sticks by static cling. You know, you're able to take it off when you need to, but it feels permanent in a way. Like I don't know too many people who have kind of ripped it off. That's not in your habit. Your habit is just to lean into a mirror. Okay, so uh, window privacy film, it's available everywhere at Home Depot. It's on Amazon. You can see all these pretty colors or pretty patterns, some colors to the selection. Um, selection at Home Depot is actually very large. <laughs> One of my clients sent me a picture after she covered her mirrors and it just looks so pretty, right? So this is probably better than what I did back in the day, which was, you know, put some paper. I mean, I used relatively pretty paper. I put it, that on my bathroom mirror and then I literally just took like tissue paper because it expands into a big surface 
and I covered my mirrored bathroom closet doors with tissue paper. And this isn't the whole thing, the whole problem, but you do have to do this probably for quite a while. I had my mirrors covered for about a year and a half. And then even after I moved to a new place, after a while, I didn't cover the bathroom mirror entirely, but at one point, again, I just put a little picture from a magazine, at least just right in front, because I had been like leaning in habitually. And that at least reminded me that I don't want to do that because that had become a habit. And sometimes I would end up picking and I didn't want to do that. So, so I had to cover back up for a little while after that. I don't remember how long I had that, but you know, it's usually more time than you would like or that you want it to be. And certainly a good rule of thumb for when to uncover the mirrors is pretty much that you're just not picking. There are so many questions that are coming to my mind that you're probably having about covering the mirrors from like, I can't cover the mirror, um, what do I do <laughs> for one reason or other? Or if I do cover the mirror, how do I put on my makeup and all this other stuff? Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to make another video for those things, but I can answer the question as to what do you do for makeup? Um, the answer is you do have another mirror that you haven't made a habit of picking at. Because the mirror that's just such a danger to you is the one that you're habitually leaning into every time or almost every time or every day that you get to it. And so what you can do is have a second mirror, like a handheld that you put in a drawer or you even lock in a lock box and I'll link one of those here and only have it open like once a day because we use the mirror a lot more than we need to, okay? So first of all, put your makeup on sloppy before you even take that mirror out of the drawer and then put it straight back in when you're done with it, you know, when you're touched up and done everything you need to do. A lot of people think they need a mirror in the evening. Like, how are you going to wash your face without a mirror? Actually, it's possible. And most people do not need the mirror in the evening. So it, that will really cut down on a lot of picking. And, you know, the idea is progress rather than perfection. We want to continually be reducing the picking and not expect it to go to zero overnight every day. You know, because that expectation, often if we're disappointed, we just let go of the whole thing. We're like, ah, that didn't work. I, I realize some people don't want to cover the mirror or cannot cover the mirror, you know, depending if you have roommates or who, you know, whoever you're sharing the bathroom with. So another thing, you know, we, we cover the mirror usually because what we don't see, we won't pick at. And luckily what we don't see well, we also won't pick at. So here's another strategy, and that is using a smart bulb to set both the color and possibly the dimness of your lighting. The prices of them have gone dramatically down, so this is quite reasonable now. And what you can do is you can set it, for example, to a nice pink light. Pink lighting makes any flaws practically invisible. So you won't be able to see imperfections and then you won't be, or blemishes and you won't be picking at them. So that's about sight. A lot of people pick based on touch. So some people do both. Some people will kind of feel around while they're doing other things and then the feel of a bump or something will drive them to the mirror to check it out um, and then they end up picking there. But other people touch their faces and just pick right there, just by touch. And so here are some strategies for that. One of my clients told me about this. I had no idea these things existed, but it works really great for her. This is a called a silly mask. So it's a silicone, <laughs> it's a silicone, mask that's meant to hold on any of those sheet masks, you know, that you apply 
drippy stuff with. <laughs> I think they're usually drippy. But she doesn't even use those most of the time. She will literally just wear this when she's studying and it works really well for her. So <laughs> I'll demonstrate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's reasonably comfortable. I don't know, this little, this little bit here for me right now is not feeling comfy, but um, I think, yeah, that's better. Um, <laughs> it feels weird when I smile, but if I'm just like steady face like she is, I can see where she could, uh, she, she wears this for hours and then, you know, anytime you touch, it's like you're not getting that feedback. You're not getting the feel of what you like there, um, what's interesting to you. And so it de-reinforces, de I don't think that's a word, but it does uh the opposite of reinforcing which is what it's doing every time you you touch your skin you're activating your brain in picking mode and keeping that part alive so the more that you can do something else and tell your brain it's actually not interesting if my hand goes up and touches here that will work over time most of you know about those little acne dot covers, right? The hydrocolloid little circular bandages that you can put on pimples or wounds to help them heal. And the idea with picking is really that you put them on before that happens to them. So as soon as you notice you have bumps, you can put those on. Again, anytime you go touch, it's not interesting. You're not going to do anything. And so it's really going to protect it and prevent you from picking at it. Now, one of my clients told me about this product. So this acne cover patch that is a hydrocolloid bandage as well with some nice things that work against acne like tea tree oil. And also it has calendula, which is very calming for the skin. But the nice thing about this is this, it's an extra large patch. Okay, it's about this size. And so you can cut it to any size that you need. If you have like a whole area that's broken out, you can use a bigger piece or you can cut it into very small pieces. Now, lastly, I wanna talk about a couple other pick by touch products that you can use again, whether you will sit there and pick it when you feel it or whether you feel it and will go pick it later in the mirror. So either way, I recommend that you cover your fingers with something. So, you know, a lot of times people wear gloves. There are some that work quite well. Um, one of my clients is very happy with one that I will include below. But a lot of times the problem with gloves, besides being too hot, although the gloves that we're talking about here are more the cotton, thin cotton gloves are usually white. You can get them at any pharmacy. People mostly, mostly use them to moisturize their hands, put moisturizer on, and then put these gloves on overnight. But you don't have to have them at night. You can wear them anytime. However, they can still be warm. And of course we like to have our phones work with them, with touch screens and track pads for when we're working. So here are a couple other suggestions that work well. Here are two different options and we'll compare and contrast. So the first one, these are silicone little finger things. And back in the day, like people for picking used to recommend those finger cots, those horrible latex little finger condom things that, and I just can't stand the smell of latex. Plus they're super tight. These are made of silicone instead. So a pro of these is that they're, they're not super easy to get off, although that will depend on the size of your finger. I'm not sure I've got this on the right one. There are, you know, in this pack, it comes with a lot of sizes, but that's the idea. They're much more comfortable than the latex, but sometimes people still complain of their fingers getting sweaty. So another option is these gamer fingers, they're called gaming finger sleeves. So these guys are, I think, a lot more comfortable because they're made of fabric but you can still use your screens. So there we go. I think it's, it fits snugly. 
um, it works on your screen, but sometimes people do complain about the, them stretching out over time. But I think, you know, it's the kind of thing like all fabric stretches and then when you wash it again, it kind of tightens up. Keeping these on in your habitual spots, like when, you know, a lot of times picking by touch happens when we're sedentary, but where our brains are active. So either at work, when we're on the computer or reading or watching television, all those kind of situations are really common pick by touch times. All right, what was your favorite strategy from this video? What step can you take right now to reduce your face picking? Please share in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Oh my goodness, that's where the, I'm looking in the complete wrong place for this.